Well, first went the record stores, then crowds thinned down at the library, and I have to wonder if physical classrooms could become another casualty of the internet age. Well, if Khan Academy is any indication, the old schoolhouse will survive, but the way kids spend their time inside it could change forever. So why are millions logging on to get lessons from one man? Could your kids benefit? My co-anchor Terry Moran went to find out. No matter how old you are, you can probably still remember what the bell sounded like at your school. You can still remember pushing your way through the hallways to your next class, or the minute hand on the clock in your math class that you swore ran slower than every other clock in the building. But that was then. This is now. Eight meters. And the same thing along the side. Welcome to the Khan Academy, online learning on steroids, a one-world schoolhouse that is skyrocketing popularity, sparking controversy, and fundamentally challenging the very notion of education in the 21st century. What we're tackling right now is the learning side. How can we democratize the information, the knowledge, so that anyone can get to whatever level they want to? Sal Khan founded the Khan Academy kind of by accident. More on that in a minute. First, the sheer scale of this thing. Seven million students around the world are attending the Khan Academy online every month. And that number is growing by 400% per year. The thousands of lessons, everything from algebra to medieval history to the fiscal cliff, they've been viewed more than 200 million times and all for free. Are you out to dismantle our educational system? I'm not an education radical. A lot of what I'm doing and we're doing is really bringing back very, very old ideas that have been proven, but somehow got lost in the fray. Sal Khan is an unlikely education reformer. He's a former hedge fund analyst, MIT undergrad, Harvard MBA, who just really stumbled upon his revolution when he tried to help a young cousin with her algebra homework back in 2004. I started tutoring her remotely. I was in Boston, she was in New Orleans, and uh, uh, after that, I started tutoring other family members and eventually put the stuff on YouTube. In a few weeks, Khan noticed that the stuff he was making for his relatives was going viral. The requests from strangers for more, more, more. Antibiotics. Visually, they aren't the kind of videos you'd expect to go viral. They're more of a virtual blackboard, but they work. And education reformers all over the world have noticed, including some heavy hitters. There's a new uh, website that uh, I've just been using with my kids recently called Khan Academy, K-H-A-N. Just one guy doing some unbelievable 15-minute tutorials. Bill Gates did more than look at the Khan Academy videos. He helped to bankroll the project. So in 2009, Khan finally quit his day job and partnered with the Gates Foundation and Google to form the Khan Academy. Here's how it works. Students watch the videos and then work on a problem set based on the lesson on the website. If you pass, you move on to the next lesson. If it looks like you don't understand a concept, the site takes you back through what you are missing. Next thing is. The goal is not to replace the traditional classroom. The goal is to liberate it. The idea of students being grouped in age-based cohorts and then going at a set pace, this is the school that we all kind of grew up in. This is actually not the way students were educated uh, for most of history. Instead, Khan and his allies see classrooms thrumming with creative activity, spurred by the fact that kids will have already engaged the subject matter through the online lessons. What does your ideal classroom look like? It won't be a bunch of chairs all positioned looking at someone in the front of the classroom. It'll be a much more collaborative space. It's not one pace fits all anymore. And the, the teacher will be doing focus interventions with them. They'll be mentoring them. They'll be inspiring them. They won't be lecturing at them. About 25 to 30 schools, most of them based around Silicon Valley, have started implementing the Khan Academy as a pilot program, exploring how it might change teaching and learning. There are plenty of critics, but one big group of supporters. The single biggest thing that happened, and it wasn't obvious to us at first, the teachers and the, and the, the principal told us, is that the students started to take ownership of their learning. They, they started to not say, hey, I'm passive, tell me what to do next. They started to say, this, these are my goals, I'm going to seek out the information. Teacher, you're my coach, you're my mentor, help me do it. Going well. They're already online, maybe, at least in some ways, that's where their classrooms can be, too. And Khan's book, The One World Schoolhouse, is in stores now, thanks to Terry.